Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Sean and I watch every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Tennille. And I'm Sean. And before we go anywhere, this video comes with a big content warning. Besides the fact that it's adult content, we're also going to be talking about some squidgy subjects. So yes, there's sexual assault, there's rape, there's a whole bunch of other adult themes in this, mainly those first two I mentioned. So, so if you're not a they fan. are main parts of the plot of this film, so we cannot avoid talking about the subject. So there it is. If you do, are not comfortable with these topics, please go ahead and leave right now. It's okay. With all of that out of the way, this is Mushy Productions' 1973 film, Belladonna of Sadness. This made me, this movie made me sad. And not for the reasons it was trying to make me sad. Made me just angry and upset. And mostly because, okay, First off, whoever says that this, like, we've been saying over and over again that supposedly this third movie is supposed to be the better one of... These three movies? Of these three movies? That's bullshit. This movie sucked. Okay? Like, this this was awful. And art-wise, if, if you could just see some of these clips outside of the context of the story... It's got some beautiful art in it. That, like, I, you can't deny. But the subject matter and the story really brings this whole experience down. And not just because it's a bummer, but because it's a shitty story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, just awful. All right, I'm going to do the story now. Okay. I'm going to do the story now, and I'm going to let people know that I'm going to have to be kind of explicit with this story, or like with the summary. Yeah. So, just a warning, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about sex, okay? Yeah, go for it. So, there's a young couple of Jean and Gina. Jean, like Jean and Jean. It's the French names. Yeah. So I'm going to call them Jean and Gina, just for clarification. Okay. So Jean and Gina just got married, and uh, they go to their king or their local lord, or whoever it is in charge. And this the, all takes place in France, by the way. Yeah. Uh, like, feudal... Medieval France. Medieval France. Yeah. Um, and their lord decides to rape Gina. Because she's, like, the most beautiful maiden in the land. Mm -hmm. So he rapes her, and then he lets all of his guards rape her. Great. Cool. Off to a great start. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. We go home, and uh, Gene decides he wants to kill his wife, and then he feels really bad about it, so he doesn't do that. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and then Gina is visited by Tiny Penis Devil. And Tiny Penis Devil says, hey, I can make you feel a lot better if you just let me sexually assault you. You know, just... I'll give you power. I'll give you anything you want. A little sexual assault. You can get whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, so, it slowly builds up as she does more and more of this. Her husband is shittier and shittier and, like, beats her and drinks a lot. Uh, keeps going. Uh, eventually, she gains enough power that she is, like, the head money collector in the town. She makes her husband the main money collector, but then he's too Bad incompetent to do it, so she starts doing it. Mm -hmm. And then the king's wife is like, nope, she's obviously a witch. Uh -huh. So she is chased out of the town as a witch. And I mean, they're not entirely incorrect because she is getting her powers from the devil, whatever. Oh my god, I hate, like, I hate this so much already. Mm -hmm. So she gets chased up into the barren wastelands to the north of the town where she almost dies. But hey, look, it's Penis Devil back for like the fifth time and she finally gives herself completely to him and she is granted perfect witchy powers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The city is hit with a black plague. She cures everybody of the black plague, and they're all like, 
on her side and will worship the devil or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the king is not okay with this. Uh, the the queen's squire gives like gives her a sex drug that she got from uh, Gina, and like then the king kills it's a them whole both. Su subplot that goes nowhere. Yeah, it's like oh no, she's tearing the whole kingdom apart. Eventually, they take her and burn her at the stake because she's a witch, and for some reason burning her at the stake turns all the other women there into witches. Which is why women were able to rise up and revolt during the French Revolution! Is how this all wraps up. So, the way this wraps up wants you to believe that this all, all of this one woman's sexy, sexy suffering has been all for the good of, like, women empowerment. And oof! That's a big yikes from me, Chief! So you're telling me that a woman's, according to this movie, a woman's only way to get back at society for sexually assaulting her is to have more sexual assault upon her and revolve her entire identity around sex. Oh yeah. Like, cool. This, like you can, you could tell from the beginning of this movie that this wanted to be some kind of like, oh wow, look at this powerful woman. But it's so male gazy. Mm -hmm. Like everything is framed for the, the, the male gaze TM where like Look at her get raped. Gina Sexually. is, yeah, like, Gina is, no matter what situation she is in, whether she is, you know, rolling through the snow, bare naked, because people have chased her out of town, she does it sexily, and... She burns sexily. Yeah, she, oh my... Everything like is nothing, sexily. Yeah, and, oh... And a lot of times it feels like, okay, so this movie is not animate like there's a not a lot of animation in this movie no it's a lot of watercolor still paintings which seem to be there so that someone can narrate the horrible things that are okay so whenever there's like a watercolor pan shot it's like all right here's all the boring shit so that we can get back to gina being sexually tormented isn't this fun and this is where we're actually going to spend our animation budget mm -hmm. on scenes like this so you can really tell where our priorities are here in the production of all this mm -hmm. all right now we gotta stop doing that for a little while so here's some flat paintings of watercolor paintings of Jean looking sad. She still looks hot, so you know, don't worry, guys. Uh, she still looks hot and sexy. She's got like her mouth partly open, just so you know that, you know, she's still, she's still sexy. Um, but here's all the boring stuff out of the way. All right, now more sex stuff, and we'll actually animate this, and mm -hmm. ooh, I hate this so much. <laughs> Oh, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. What I hate the most is that, like, the artwork displayed here is gorgeous. Yeah. Like, uh, there's some beautiful watercolors. There's some, like, really unique animation and, like, graphic design going on here. Like, some of the ways, um, some of these, like, transitions and things that are going on are beautiful and it's not just watercolors it's like watercolors and like there's some pastel work going on here i'm pretty sure there's some scenes that are done in like colored pencil or graphite and like this this gold gold paint, paint. Mm -hmm. and it's like what the hell why is such a trash story being <laughs> like look this nice mm -hmm. i oh i hate it um there's, I will say, I really, really am not a big fan of, like, a revenge story based around the main character getting raped as, mm -hmm. like, a story. Oh, yeah. But even then, you could frame that in a much better way of her getting revenge in literally any other way than sex, but nope. Nope. 
you know, it's not like that's the traumatizing part of her past or anything. We're going to just double, triple, quadruple down on that? Quadruple down on that, yeah. And the fact that, like, her revenge is painted as something that needs to... needs to also involve sexual assault mm -hmm. is... Ugh, 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 ugh. It's so bad. It's so gross. Okay, I don't want to talk about this movie anymore. It really doesn't deserve to be talked about. Um, don't watch it. Don't watch it. I mean, I doubt we've been able to show, like, anything from it. No, look at all these still... Go to Google and just, like, look at, like, images of this movie. And that's all you need to see. It looks pretty. <sighs> but, like, it. that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, anyway. Next time. So, whoa, 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 wait. No, yes. there's a little bit of things I gotta say about this one. Okay. So... Uh, right after this movie was made, um, Mushi Productions went bankrupt and didn't end up making any more films. Osama Tetsuka didn't even really have a hand in making this movie. Oh, okay. He was around for like maybe the first year or two of pre-production slash production, and this movie was in production for like a good five or six years. Wow, okay. And then he actually left the studio and went and started making, uh, and made up a new studio, Tetsuka Studios or whatever, <laughs> and started making new stuff and wasn't involved in this one at all. So this was actually directed by uh, Iichi Yam Yama Yamato. Um, and it's apparently based off of the book called Satanism and Witchcraft by Jules Michael, Michael Annette. I'm sure that's a charming read. Cool. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. If you want to do a woman's empowerment movie, hot tip from a woman, um, don't make it about rape and sexual assault. Seems like a pretty good that, that's idea. That's a good first step. That's first a step, good first uh, step. Take this whole idea and just don't use it. Toss it in the trash don't, where it belongs. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, anyway, next time. Uh, we're watching the first ever crossover film. Mm-hmm. We're watching Mazinger Z versus Devilman. Two hot TV shows of the 60s and 70s in Japan okay, are having a crossover. We're going to get whiplash going from this movie to that. Oh, Probably. God. Okay. Here we go. See y'all next time. Bye.